Yo, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's Egal Talks Football, and we are back again with another video. In today's video, we got a lot to discuss, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we got a lot to discuss. Eddie and Ketia and Aaron Ramsdale's exits are so close, but yet so far. Because every time we get an option to sell the player or loan them out, they are not up to Arsenal standards. We're going to get into that. Plus, Mikel Moreno, we've had a bid. Closer and closer the deal is getting, but that bid was rejected. We also have some other potential signings and targets that we're speaking about today in today's video. But before we go any further, please do hit that like button on the video. Please do hit that subscribe button on the video. And let's get straight into it as this is going to be one of many videos that I'm going to be giving you guys updates. But today, this is a big one. Let's get into it. Bang. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, how is everybody doing? Hope you guys are all well, wherever you're watching us from. I really do appreciate all your love and support. We are so close to 30,000 subscribers. If you guys could please hit that like button and subscribe. If you guys are new, it would help me out massively. But before we go any further, we got to get straight into the news. If you guys don't know, yesterday we heard reports that we had a bid go in for Mikel Moreno. And that bid was rejected, ladies and gentlemen. So we got to talk about everything that's going on with the Mikel Moreno situation right about now. But before you go any further, I'm just going to show you guys the actual article about the whole Mikel Moreno situation. And of course, we will be live later today. We, uh, or, or if you're watching this, we would have already been live and uh, or have a live planned in for later today to preview the whole Premier League and everything around Arsenal. But David Onstein did speak about it. Fabrizio Romano did speak about it. Let's get into it. Two minutes into the video, and I still haven't shown you guys the transfer news. Let's get into it. Uh, Mikel Moreno is keen to join Arsenal and play under Mikel Arteta with personal terms not, uh, not thought to be an issue, although Real Sociedad have offered him a contract extension and the players' representatives have made it clear that his intentions are to join Arsenal. We've also had another one here where he said that Arsenal have stepped up their efforts to sign Real Sociedad midfielder Mikel Moreno and the two clubs are now in negotiations with and Edu has been in Spain last week uh, to broker an agreement between Arsenal and they are confident that they will find a resolution. Now there's also before we go on to other stuff, we're just going to quickly show you more about Mikel Moreno. There's more here. Miguel Delaney reported yesterday that there was a bid rejected by Real Sociedad. And this bid was about around 30 million euros. They want 35 million euros and they're holding out for the 35 million euros as Arsenal have had what should be their first bid and their first offer rejected. From Real Sociedad. So we're going to have to see what happens there. And I'm going to give you guys my thoughts in a second, but I'm just going to show you guys a little bit more. As Fabrizio Romano said, that the two clubs are still in verbal uh, negotiations. That was yesterday. And yeah, just to get you guys caught up. So the rejection, we know about this. We know that Arsenal are a little bit far apart from Real Sociedad, but it's not too far. It's getting closer and closer. Reports were first that we were 10 million off. Now reports are they were 5 million off. I think this deal will eventually get done. And that will mean that we'll no longer be looking at any other midfield targets. Now, we have heard reports that multiple clubs are still monitoring the situation and there's still interest in Bruno Gamares. Now, Bruno Gamares is going to cost us around £100 million, pounds, ladies and gentlemen, and where Mikel Moreno will cost us around €35 million. Euros. If we do sign Mikel Moreno, I don't think we will go for Bruno Gamares any longer. But... Who's the better signing, Mikel Moreno for 35 million or Bruno Gamares for the 100 million that Newcastle are asking for? Or even if they're willing to lower that valuation, is Bruno Gamares the better option for Arsenal at this moment in time? That is the question that we need to know. That is the question we need answered. And you guys need to let me know in the comments what you guys think. Would you rather still spend all that money and try to get Bruno Gamares in? Or with Arsenal's situation with FFP, would you rather just go for the uh, Mikel Moreno deal. It does seem like Mikel Moreno is our number one target. We are submitting bids and I do think we're going to end up signing Mikel Moreno and this stuff of interest to uh, Bruno Gamares, in my opinion, is just being drawn up 
because Man City had an injury to Oscar Bob and they've also gotten rid of Calvin Phillips. Calvin Phillips, if you guys don't know, has joined none other. Uh, Calvin Phillips has joined none other than um, Ipswich. So yes, with Calvin Phillips joining Ipswich, that now opens the door for a possible transfer for uh, a possible transfer another way but before we go any further there is also another saga that we need to discuss there is another saga that we need to discuss ladies and gentlemen eddie and ketia yes eddie and ketia there is an eddie and ketia saga and this one is very interesting because eddie and ketia ladies and gentlemen was linked to bournemouth as a possible dominic selanke replacement now, I have some good news and bad news. Actually, I just have bad news. Bournemouth have actually signed a deal with Porto uh, uh, forward Ev uh, Evelson, Evelson, and they've paid 40 million euros. I mean, 40 million pounds they've paid. The, the player is set to travel in 24 hours to Bournemouth, and that means with him signing, that means that's it. That's it. We might be stuck with Eddie and Ketia. Bournemouth agreeing this deal, we now might be stuck with Eddie and Ketia and we might not be able to shift him off. What are we going to do? What on earth are we going to do with Eddie and Ketia? I hope, I pray that a Wolves, a Crystal Palace, somebody comes in for Eddie and Ketia and says, you know what, we'll take him off your hand. We'll be willing to give you 30 million euros. At this point, Arsenal should just take whatever offer they get that's over the value of 25 million euros. Yeah, because we rejected that initially. We should have never rejected that. We should have taken it from Marseille. That was a mistake. And Arsenal should admit and acknowledge the mistake that they've made in that situation. It was a lapse of judgment. It was it was a little bit of a big error on Arsenal's part. We shouldn't have done that. And now we find ourselves in a situation where we might not be able to get anywhere near that. Yeah, it's a problem. It's a problem. I don't know if uh, if we're going to get rid of Eddie and Ketia, but it does seem like it, it is an issue at this moment in time. Now, before we talk about anything else, before we talk about anything else, I need you guys to let me know. You're, if you've gotten to this point of the video, please do hit that like button because now we're going to talk about some strikers. You guys love to talk about a striker, don't you? You guys love talking about the Victor Yakarizas of the world, the Victor Osmans of the world. You love talking about those guys. So we're going to get into those, those potential targets in a second. But there's also some other pieces that we need to discuss and some other options that we need to discuss. Now, there is some player that I've never heard of until today that Arsenal are linked to that we need to discuss. First things first, who is Maxi De Copper, 23-year-old uh, fullback, Belgium fullback, who has been linked to Arsenal and Liverpool in the last 24 to 48 hours. As you can see here from the Liverpool echo saying that Arsenal could be competition for the fullback. It doesn't make sense. We have so many fullbacks at this moment in time. Why would we be interested in another one? I don't believe this story 110% at this moment in time. Now, with that also being said, there is other stories that we need to also get into, like the one for a certain Marco Verratti, from uh, from uh, formerly from PSG, or it, does he still play for PSG? If I'm not mistaken, he is in the Qatari league, right? So yeah, PSG, uh, former PSG midfielder and current uh, Al Arabic uh, midfielder, who the Italian midfielder, the 31 year old, has been linked to Arsenal, in addition to some other clubs. Now the report came out of Saudi Arabia, uh, out of Qatar. Uh, is it the which, which league is it? It's, it's, he's in the Qatar League. Damn. Yeah, he's in the Qatar League. So Manchester United, Man City, Liverpool and Arsenal have been offered a chance to sign PSG uh, midfielder, former PSG midfielder uh, Verratti. Now, the authenticity of this report, I don't 100% know. One thing I will tell you is the original story came from uh, the, the, the Express. The original story came from the Express or... And they originally got that story from 
sheets news never heard of never heard of these sources but these are where the stories are coming from this i would i would categorize in the same level as the the story with um rabio that we spoke about the other day these 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 signings are not going to happen these links are not going to happen we're not going to be seeing Verratti at arsenal we're not going to be seeing rabio at arsenal even though there is stories and links to Rabio and Verratti. Like, let me just show you the 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 Rabio one. The Rabio one saying that Arsenal have significant interest in signing Rabio. Another one here saying Arsenal. Uh, would it be good business if Arsenal signed Rabio on a free transfer at Arsenal? We also have links to Rafinha. We've also had links to uh, other players. And also, while we're in it, we've also had links to Victor Ozyman, which Arsenal have now officially pulled out of the Victor Ozyman race. That does seem like that is not going to happen anymore. And Arsenal have completely just exited the Victor Ozyman race. Uh, so that is the situation with Victor Ozyman. But while we're talking about strikers, why don't we talk about Victor Jokeres? What's going on with Victor Jokeres, ladies and gentlemen? Well, if I'm not mistaken, Arsenal are still informed of what's going on with Victor Jokeres. Arsenal have not moved away from the Victor Jokeres deal. And... From from what I from what I seen a couple of hours ago, Arsenal have held talks with Victor Jokeres, as reported. You can see here, Arsenal have held talks with Victor Jokeres. Now, what those talks were, they're probably just negotiating personal terms, probably negotiating how much it would cost to actually get him to the club, and we may be seeing the early signs of Arsenal potentially pushing for a striker signing. Now, this would be huge. This would potentially be huge for Arsenal because a lot of people are saying Arsenal are that goal scorer away. Arsenal are that difference maker away. So will Arsenal pull the trigger and get Victor Jokeres over the line? We will have to wait and see. But at this moment in time, the, the news is, according to reports yesterday, printed in editions of Portuguese newspapers, Arsenal are maintaining interest in sporting uh, CB, CP striker Victor Jokeres. And they even go to the extent of saying that claims that Gunners have recently informed uh, talks with Lisbon and Outfit over the player. So we'll have to wait and see uh, which stands at an 86 million pound valuation at this moment in time. So will Arsenal trigger that 86 million pound valuation? We'll have to wait and see. Um, will Arsenal get Jokeres and would that be a great signing? So imagine Moreno and Jokeres with Calafiori joining us this window. Is that enough for Arsenal to win major honours uh, this season if we can get all three of those uh, players through the door. And finally, the last thing we need to speak about is, yes, we're struggling to get rid of Eddie and Ketia, but we're also struggling to get rid of Aaron Ramsdale. How on earth, Nottingham Forest, have, uh, how on earth is anybody going to get Aaron Ramsdale when he's on 120k a week? And, and we're asking for a very, very expensive transfer plan. Now, Nottingham Forest are one of the clubs that are interested in him. They put him on their short list. As you can see from uh, from articles uh from articles from the Nottingham Forest uh news web, uh, news pages, I could show you exactly what I'm talking about by just opening this up right here. But yeah, that is the final topic of the day. We do have situations where there's people who are interested in Aaron Ramsdale and there's people who want Aaron Ramsdale, but we, we are going to struggle to to let him go if we're rejecting loan bids from Ajax and Nottingham Forest just don't have the financial clout to, to get him. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But at this moment in time, Moreno is not done yet. There's been a pump fake for, for certain other players like like uh, Verratti and, and Rabio, but that's not serious. And right now, I do believe Moreno will get done and then we'll focus our attentions on an attacker and that could be Victor Jokeres. But Eze potentially is also another option, but we haven't heard much on Eze yet. So I'll leave you guys there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys on the next video and then check out my live stream later today also if you haven't already done so. I'm out, people. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I'll catch you guys on the next show. Peace. Love for the love. And make sure you like the video and leave a comment down below. What do you think is going to happen from now to the end of the transfer window?